Okay, a few people have been having trouble with the online quizzes with negative exponents, so I'm going to give you two examples uh, to show you where you're making your mistakes. All right, so first of all, I have negative 2x to the fourth. I have to distribute it times two things here. So my answer is going to have two parts. When I do negative 2 times this, the coefficient is 1, so I do negative 2 times positive 1, so I get negative 2. And then x to the fourth times x to the negative fourth I add the exponent, so I get x to the 0, minus, oh, minus times minus, so this is now going to be plus 2x to the 4th y. Problem is, the answer key doesn't show that answer, because x to the 0 is defined as 1. So the final answer should look like negative 2 plus 2x to the 4th y. And some of you, you, I think you knew that it was x to the 0, but when you wrote your answer, you wrote it with an x, which is incorrect. So x to the 0 becomes 1, so then you do 1 times negative 2, and you get negative 2. And that would be the final answer of that one. So now, try this one yourself, stop the video, and then restart it to look at the answer. So again, I'm going to distribute. This time I have three things to distribute to, so negative 3 times the coefficient 1, I get negative 3. Then the variables, I add the exponent, I get x to the 0, and then negative times negative is positive 3, x to the negative 1, then here I get positive 3, x to the negative 5, y squared. You think you're done, but you can never leave a x to the 0 in the answer. So x to the 0 becomes 1, and so negative 3 plus 3x to the negative 1 plus 3x to the negative 5, y squared. <coughs> and you have to remember, anything to the 0 exponent is defined as 1. And that's a definition in the section on negative exponents. The reason x to the 0 is 1, I'll show you the reason why. Let's take some simple things that you know the answer to. Do you know that x over x is 1? Do you know that 5 over 5 is 1? Do you know that 3y over 3y is 1? Yeah. Same thing over same thing. Whatever the fraction is, it reduces to 1. Well, let's put some exponents on these. This x, when it doesn't have an exponent, it's a 1, right? And so is this. When you simplify a division, the rule is subtract exponents, right? So x to the 1 minus 1 becomes x to the 0. And that, I told you, is the answer 1. And you knew that it was 1 when you did just x over x. And that's what helped us come up with the definition of anything to the 0. Put exponents on the 5. Well, that's the same as 5 to the 1 over 5 to the 1. And when you simplify exponents, you subtract the top exponent, take away the bottom exponent. So that becomes 5 to the 1 minus 1, which is 5 to the 0. And since we knew without the exponents that 5 over 5 was 1, it makes sense that the definition of 5 to the 0 also has to be 1. On this one, again, you can reduce the 3's first, just like reducing fractions. Um, or you could reduce the y over y and get 1. And if you do it using exponents, you do 3 to the 1 minus 1 times y to the 1 minus 1. Well, 1 minus 1 is 0, so it's 3 to the 0 times y to the 0. 3 to the 0 is defined as 1. y to the 0 is defined as 1. 1 times 1 is 1. So there's lots of ways you can think of doing problems like this. But when you're dealing with exponents and you're combining them in a multiplication, you add the exponent. So x to the negative 5 times x to the 5 I take the exponent, negative 5 plus 5, I get x to the 0, and that becomes a 1. All right, so let's do this problem. So this problem becomes negative 3 x to the 0 plus 3 
x to the negative 1 plus 3 x to the negative 5 y squared. I can't add these exponents because those are not similar. Um, this one gets to be simplified because I cannot leave an x of a 0 in a problem. So 3 plus 3x to the negative 1 plus 3x to the negative 5y squared. And that's the answer. Using no fractions and using negative exponents, never leave x to the 0 in the problem. All right, you should be able to do those online quizzes now. I think it's section E or...